years when we are married, soon one dear heart near to be. Soon one dear heart near to be. Penny! Soon one dear heart near to be. Penny! Come in, Captain Drummond. You rang, sir? Yes, I rang. Now, why didn't you come the first time I called? Because the cook is deaf, sir. Are we playing a game, Tony? No, sir. Then riddle me the reason you didn't come, because cook is deaf. Because if she were not deaf, sir, she would have heard you. And if she had heard you, she would have called me. And if she had called you, you would have heard her, I would have heard her, and I would have come to you, sir. Uh, you win, Tony. What, sir? Now, where were we? If you mean where was I, sir, I was outside with the cork sled. The fog is very thick, and you're afraid that Colonel Nielsen and Miss, uh, Clavering wouldn't see them. See them? The gates, sir. Oh, well, you let them, of course. The gates, sir. And now, Tenny, the lantern's on the gate. Oh, yes. Well, now that we're out of the fog, let's see if you can help me. Here goes. Tenny? I have written a poem. Not really, sir. Yes, really. Here, read this. Very well. The first letters of each line taken in order spell a young lady's name. P-H-Y-L-L-I-S. Phyllis. Oh, go ahead, read it. I am so. Aloud. Perhaps you'll know when this you see how much, my dear, you mean to me. You brought new joy into my days. Love has me kept. Cured in its maze. Long seen the hours through which I gaze into the years when we are married. Soon one dear heart near to be blank. Well, it's a bit on the feathery side, don't you think so? The feathery side? Oh, definitely. Oh, Penny, I want help, not criticism. Penny. What rhymes with married? 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 Harried, sir. Oh, no, 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 Penny. Harried doesn't go with married. You speak with the voice of inexperience, sir. You don't like the idea of my getting married, do you, Penny? May I speak freely, sir? Of course. No, sir, I do not. But why, Penny? Why? I want to be married. There's an old saying, marry in haste and repent at leisure. Ah, but Phyllis, uh, Miss Clavering is different, Penny. She is <coughs> probably at the door, sir. Shall I answer it? No, Penny. I shall answer it. Yes, Aldous. Darling. You. Uh, just a moment, young fella. Hello, Colonel. I have your favorite cheese souffle just as you ordered. Good. Try and hold it for me. I've got to meet the 7 o'clock express. There are some important papers from the yard. Oh, what's up at Scotland Yard? A nice juicy murder? No. But now that you're back in England, anything can happen and probably will. <laughs> Not this time, Inspector. And I hope you're right. And don't call me Inspector. Right, sir? Do you like cheese souffle? Do you? I hate it. Good luck. Thank heaven. Good evening, Penny. Uh, good evening, Miss Levin. Shall I uh, destroy this, sir? No, oh, Penny. Uh, you may take Miss Clavering's wrap. Sit down, honey. for me. Why, well, Hewitt's an acrostic. I spent the better part of two hours on it. Perhaps you'll know when this you see how much, my dear, you mean to me. Well, that's sweet. You really like it? Of course I do. You brought me joy into my days. Love has me captured in its maze. Darling, I'm so completely lost. I hope I never find my way out. Long seen the hours through which I gaze into the years when we are married. Soon one dear heart, near to be. 
Uh, yes. What rhymes with married? Harriet. Oh, that's what Penny said. Penny doesn't like me. Oh, you mustn't mind him, then. But you're very fond of Penny, and... Pardon me. Hello? Hello, Hugh. Are you there? I hope so, Aldi. Are you? Someone must have spilled a box of tacks on the road near Firebolt's Inn. And all my cars have gone flat. Drift out for me, will you? Right you are. Is it time, sir? Oh, thanks. <laughs> Here's a dog for you, my girl. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> I beg your pardon, but you see, I was in a... A hurry? Yes. Michel Valdin, at your service. I could not help but overhear your difficulty with the tax. And as my way takes me to Captain Drummond's very gate, may I suggest that I accommodate you in that direction? Oh, that's awfully busy now, even all that. But if I didn't wait for you... Yes, of course, I understand. But you see, uh, I insist that you permit me this slight favor. Right, you can't do this to me. Quiet, quiet. But my baby's being christened in the morning. And if I don't go... Yes. smile for the pretty little barmaid. <laughs> Sorry, I won't come along. No, I'll try to think of something to rhyme with married. Think about this. Back in a little while. Hold that me? No, thank you. Oh, Penny. Yes, ma'am. Why don't you want Captain Drummond to marry me? Well, you see, Miss, Captain Drummond leads an adventuresome sort of life. And I rather doubt that you would fit in, if you will forgive my saying so. Is that all you have against me, Penny? You see, Miss, Captain Drummond is rather like a son to me. And I don't want to see him make a mistake. And because he proposed marriage an hour after he met me, you feel he might be making one. Love at first sight is rather like a meal room, Miss Clevering. It kicks backwards. Suppose I were to tell you that Captain Drummond is the first and only man I've ever cared for, and that I love him deeply and with all my heart. Would that make any difference? I rather think it would, Miss. Then that's the way it is, really. That makes me happier. Good. Kenny. Yes, ma'am. Captain Drummond really likes this adventuresome life you mentioned. If I may use the term, miss, it's the captain's wine. You like it, too. Well, it sort of runs in the family, miss. Don't you think there's much to be said in favor of home and fireside? Mm, the uh, thought had never occurred to me, but it is an idea. Well, I, for one, hope that after we're married, we can all settle down to peace and quiet. Oh, probably Colonel Nielsen. This is Rockingham Lodge. Captain Drummond's residence. Yes, please. Will you bring my bag, please? Quiet, please. Pay no attention. It was ever so nice and friendly like. But when your friend went away, he smiled at me, and he gave me a fire pit. You left my message for me? No, sir. He just went. Oh, it is not a bad word. Oh, sir. Rockingham Lodge, hurry, please. Operator! Operator! Penny! Captain Drummond? Who are you? You are Captain Drummond? Where is Miss Clavering? May I suggest that you stay where you are, please? Thank you. I am Michael Baldin. You do not know me. One year ago, my brother-in-law died on the gallows. You were responsible. I could kill you now, Captain Drummond, and settle our score. But I will not let you off with one bullet. No, that would be too easy. Too easy for you and Miss Clavering. Where is she? It became necessary for her to leave quite suddenly. Ah, she wouldn't do that. 
On the contrary, she went quite willingly when informed of, of the condition. What conditions? You may find out later, that is, if you are clever. I am here only to impress upon you the necessity, shall we say the most vital necessity, of doing exactly what you are told. And what am I supposed to do? Remain here until you are told to leave. Do not notify the police. And I warn you particularly not to bring your friend Colonel Nielsen into this. If you do, Miss Clavering will be killed immediately. We understand one another, do we not? Yes. And now, Captain Drummond, until we meet again, if you are clever. Scotland Yard, I'm your friend. Is there anything wrong? I want to know it. I can't tell you, Colonel. Thanks just the same. Don't think I'm being rude, but... You want me to leave? Please. Then I won't leave. But, Colonel... No. you left, there was a knock at the door. And when you opened it, there stood a lady. Read that, Miss Cleverly. Round and flat and not a hat, but it carries a message for all of that. What is it? A jingle. But a most important jingle. I don't understand. Perhaps your playful captain will. He's fond of putting his thoughts in rhyme, is he not? Well, he shall have his fill, I promise you. You want to hurt him, tell me. I shall. You mean, you intend to eliminate the meddling captain? Yes. Will I see him again? Perhaps. But do not think you can warn him. To do so would only end the matter quickly. There was a roaring noise in my head, like... like a train emerging from a tunnel. And then? And then I woke up. Where did you wake up, Kenny? Where? In a tulip bed. There was something in my hand. What was it? An envelope. An envelope? Yes. Oh, come, Kenny, do we have to search you? It, it might help. I was playing a joke. It must have backfired. Carefully, Hugh. I can say what I'm going to only once. All right, darling, go ahead. It's round and flat and not a hat. But it carries a message for all of that. What? Say it again. Fill it. Fill it. She hung up. What'd she say? Round and flat and not a hat, but it carries a message for all of that. Round and flat. What is round and flat and not a hat that carries a message? Why, be a gramophone record. You recognize the voice, you Drummond? I am Irena Soldanis, widow of Clara Soldanis. You are the one person responsible for sending my husband to the scaffold. And now I am repaying you for the misery you have caused me. 
Phyllis Clavering is with me. You have until morning, Drummond, to find her. You can use your friend Longworth and that putty-faced servant of yours. But keep Colonel Nielsen and Scotland Yard out of it. You like games, don't you, Drummond? Then my game with you begins. Eight paces ahead, you'll find a clue. It's twisted and hanging plainly in sight. Eight paces ahead. Anything twisted and hanging? Sounds like a rope. Mm, or a piece of cord. Mr. Longworth. One time. Not your lab, old man. Exactly 40 miles from here, you'll find an inn where fishermen are lying. Perhaps Phyllis will be there. Exactly 40 miles from here, you'll find an inn where fishermen are lying. Exactly 40 miles. But can't you show them? You, try Draymond stuff. Draymond stuff. You are. Three minutes. Traffic. Population 2200. Hotel. The Angler's Rest. Some fishermen will be lying at an Angler's Rest. An inn at Three minutes. Kenny, my gun. Yes. It's time for me, too, old boy. I'm coming too, sir. Um, Good idea, Kenny. Here, I'll help oh, you. Hugh. Hugh. My baby's being crystal. You are. up, babe. I'll name her for Phyllis. But I can't. She's a boy. What is this fella, uh, Val Balzine? What does he look like? Well, about my height, very dark and wore thick spectacles. Thick ones, eh? Hmm. Anything like this? That's Valdine. The gentleman's name is not Valdine. From these reports, which came down on the express tonight from the yard, it appears that Mikhail Bagoris and some woman, possibly your friend Irina, are wanted in Paris for swindling an American millionaire and murdering him. Stop in the yard will handle it. You heard what Irina said about the police. You can't, don't you see? You really think she'll play the game? No, as long as it amuses her. Well, you've got to keep out of it. All right, you go ahead and handle it your own way. Splendid. Your gun, sir. Goodbye, Colonel. Come on, Alfie, let's go. Scotland Yard. Colonel Nelson speaking. A sang at me here. You know, my dear Sanger, I really think I should have been an actor. I was very good at amateur theatricals. Hmm. But I chose a less dangerous profession. Would you know me? I know your voice, Colonel Nelson. Oh, I did me with belly jacket. That's capital, sir. Now remember, don't you and Grizzle follow me too closely. And don't come to the angler's rest until either I call you or if you see that I'm in trouble. Right, sir. Hey, Major. Sit down now, right? Right, sir. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Well, come on, Penny, you're one of us. Why the devil doesn't something happen?
I'm going to follow him. Yes, sir. Captain Drummond told us to stay here. My mind is made up. I'll have Raiden again. All right, yeah, I'll walk in. meet again. Yes, I expected we would. Then you also probably expected another little poem. Yes, I... Uh, yes. Here it is. What do I do next? That depends on your cleverness. What you've done once, do once again. Done once, do once again. Loud and bitter. Yeah. 
Put the pillow under my coat, Rip. The Sangilbones Cafe, matey. I smell trouble. Beneath the setting sun. Hey, you're out here in the skies with a stroke of genius. I don't know if I like it, sir. W-O-N-1. O-N-E-1. The similarity of sound resulting from the different spellings of oriental and occidental words suggests material for an interesting thesis, what? Yes, and if you mix ideas like that with the clothes you're wearing, you'll get a knife in your gullet down here. Yes, sir. Your life wouldn't be worth tuppence. <laughs> Don't you go out to throw it away? You know, our baby's being christened tomorrow. Oh, you'll be there, Algy. I hope. Hmm? Be careful. Keep your eyes peeled for the number three. Come on. Right, come on, Don't you trust me? Thank <laughs> you. 
How easily you follow orders, Raman. What have you done to Phyllis? Is she all right? But of course. Would you like to hear her voice? Let me talk to her. Speak to him, my dear. You. Keep your chin up, dear. A pretty speech, Drummond. If Lady Macbeth isn't double-crossing us, we'll get out of this yet. But you've a long way to go before you find out whether I am double-crossing you or not. And then let's get on with it. The air in this place won't last forever. Be grateful that this time it is air. What am I to do next? I could kill you now, or leave you here to die. But I've not finished with you. You will suffer just as much as my husband did when his life was taken away from him. Oh, dear him, please. You're wasting your time, Brahman. Below you is the Thames River, and I will... are on a trail, it'll mean the end of Phyllis. Do you think we can... I know we can get to Rocky Mirage before Drummond. After that, who knows? Well, this is out of court with the line, but there's nothing below it except what I've just read. Let me see that again. Well, come on, Kenny. Where did you sit have to go for that ale? Here I am now, sir. Uh, it's fine, Effie. It's because it's so late. That's why I was gone so long, sir. And you know, Curly Kings, that's what I used to call Henry when he was a baby, sir. When I was coming up the stairs, there was the most peculiar old man, and he... A clue which is hidden below the line. Below the line. Perhaps this will give you an idea, though. I could use one, Penny. Oh, I'm stuck, LJ. I'm absolutely in the dark. May I see it, sir? Yes, Penny. I think I have it, sir. Well, Penny, what? An idea, sir. Effie, a match. Here's your match, sir, Charlie King. Now, you observe, sir, I like the match. I place the flame under the paper, so. During the war, spies resorted to invisible ink. And I thought... Thought that this might be one of the crimes. What does it say? Go back to Rockingham. She's sitting at the runaround, Elsie. Maybe she isn't. But, I mean, we can't be sure until we're certain, can we? Either way, she's got us last to the mast. But we'll beat her, Elsie. By Christopher, we'll beat her. Oh, 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 Where you found me, remember? Yes, Salzy, I remember. Confounded Drummond, why do you have to make so much noise? Hello, Colonel. Did anything happen while we were gone? Not here at any rate. Why the disguise? The chase led to Limehouse. So you're back where you started from? Oh, yes, confounded. Think you'll hear from the lady again? Well, I'm trying to believe I will. Why doesn't something happen? Penny! Yes, sir. Yes, Quinn. Yes, he's here. Alzi? Alzi? 
Now, Bunny Wonder, you know he looks just like you. Let's call him Gwen. What? Oh, yes, yes, that's right. He is a boy, isn't he? If you were a girl, we'd call him Gwenny Wenny, wouldn't we? Pardon me, Gwen, but I'm expecting an important call. Bye. Look here, old boy. You what? Nothing. Something, sir, and if ever I ride in one of them there taxes again, my name ain't Epic Edison. I'll have it undone in a moment, sir. I tied it up. Take your hands to yourself, will you? And I told a taxi man to hurry, but I didn't tell him to break my neck, which he almost did when he hit a bump. Oh, there it is, sir. <laughs> and the taxi fare come to one pound twelve and sixpence. It is. Pay him, Penny. Oh, he's paid, sir. But Curly Kins can give me the one pound twelve and sixpence. Where'd you get this? Well, just after you left, a knock come at the door. And when I opened it, there was a very polite gentleman what wore heavy spectacles. Oh, it's a gramophone record. Maybe we'll have some pretty music. Come on. I am going to let you see Phyllis within the next hour. She's very brave, Drummond. You should be proud of her. And perhaps she will be proud of you if you find the answer to a line from a certain volume of Wordsworth's poems. Go back to Angler's Rest. That woman's giving you the run around, Hugh. Let me handle this, won't you? If the yard came into this, she would kill Phyllis. No, Colonel. She reigned his game and we've got to play it her way, as long as we know Phyllis is alive. See you later, Colonel. What's it all about, sir? That's what I intend to find out. would have to happen. Tools, Penny. Yeah, hold it. Good evening, gentlemen. May I suggest that you raise your hands, please? Thank you. It's your trick, allies. And you are vulnerable. What do we do next? Uh, you, Mr. Longworth, take the captain's gun, please. What would I say? You cut this out. It isn't cricket. It's far from it. Drop it. Hands up again, please. Thank you. This way, Captain Drummond. See you later, Elton. Well, uh, you are very optimistic, my friend. Oh, also, uh, may I warn you, that to fire after my car, as you intend to do, will result only in the sudden elimination of Captain Drummond. Thank you. I see that you understand. After you, my friend. I shall have to lower my hand. Please be certain that is all that you do. Meet again, what? That's what. The night is full of surprises. Yes. And the night is still young. Good evening. Ah, Lady Macbeth. With you as ever, Drummond. But I am not walking in my sleep. And here is Phyllis, too. Hello, darling. Hello, Hugh. Chin up. Right. Uh, face uh, forward, please, Captain. 
you. Yes, darling. Is Drayminster the fifth or sixth most beautiful village in England? Does it make much difference? That depends. Well, then I'll remember it. It's important. Is that all you can tell me? If she tries to tell you more, it will be most unfortunate. Say only what she's told you to, darling. You catch on quickly, Drummond. And now, my friend, you better say goodbye to Phyllis. What again? Uh, you uh, may stop now. Uh, good hunting, sir. Bye, darling. Don't worry. Here we are, sir. Tenny, I can hold on the tongue crack just in case. A oh, brilliant idea, Tenny. I know the like it, though. That should be Mr. Longwell. What happened? My God, Philip. Yeah? Sit up, roll that water. Hey, go on. Crazy, but I'm looking for a book of poems by Wordsworth. You understand? What's your name, sir? Drummond, Captain U. C. Drummond. Didn't know I didn't just say so. This here was left for you by a gentleman. With spectacles? Aye, and everyone's too. Anything's liable to happen. Have the boys stand by with a car. Very well, Colonel Milton. Wait a minute. Sitting on that no, no. Oh, I wonder if there's anything in that basket. You know Wordsworth. Jose. What do you got in the basket? Fish. I'll give me another bit of it. Ah, if you ask me. Captain Drummond. Yes, Tony? While you were investigating the fish, I found this. The mirror. Landlord! Well, James, what would it be? Is there a place around here called the mirror? Aye, ah, there is. Well, what is it, a pond or what? No, it's an house, an old house about three miles down the east road. It's haunted. Who lives there? No one lives there now since old farmer Jason was murdered about 12 years ago. He was a fierce one, he was. Kept the most awful savage dogs, he did. Oh, jolly what? Well. Out the East Road, eh? Aye. There's no other house near. You've been going there? Yeah. Oh, much of life. Come on, Elsie. You stay here. If our friend tries to follow, dot him one. I shall bash him on the bazooka, sir. on this side. Over here, too. We could hitch up the tow rope and pull it off. It'll take too long. It's only half a mile further. Come ahead. Alzi. What? Don't forget to call Gwen when we get back. 
if we get back. must be it. Hang on. Open the door, Alfie. Huh? Open the door. like a battery torture chamber. This must have been where the murdered man kept his dog. Maybe we better go. Quiet. to the fifth or sixth most beautiful village in England. Do you think this is the right time to be discussing the relative beauty of villages, Hugh? Phyllis so asked me that question in the car. I can't see what difference it makes. From what Irena said, it might make quite a lot. They wrote their little message between the fifth and sixth rings. Then the rings must have something to do with it. But wait, Elsie. Yes. If we choose the wrong one. The lady or the tiger, huh? Or the end of all of us. Oh.
to rest. my husband's death. The last act, I take it. Yes, you are right, Raman. I don't suppose I could strike a bargain with you. A bargain? As for Miss Clapper and Mr. Longworth, after all, they're only innocent bystanders. It is my plan for the first that you and Miss Clavering should go together. If Mr. Longworth happens to be with you, that's his affair. And now I want you to be quiet and listen very, very carefully. Drummond. Yes, I understand. Climax of your jolly little game is a trip to Kingdom Come when this infernal machine goes off. Is that right? That was Mikhail's idea. You seem to have thought of everything. We will keep them company if we do not get out of here. How much longer do you think it will be? Until the place is full of gas, I suppose. And then it will blow up. Would you have gone for your honeymoon? Captain Drummond! Captain Drummond! Stay here. Yes, honey, here we are. I don't know you there, sir. Unlock the door. I can't, sir. There's no key here. Now listen carefully, Tony. I have a pin from the hinges. Oh, yes, sir. There are pins. We'll pull them out. Sir, they're rusty. 
Kenny, have you got a gun? Yes, sir. Now, Kenny, do exactly as I tell you. Yes, sir. Put the muzzle of the gun under the top pin. It's there, sir. Now, I'll pull the trigger. It worked, sir. Good, now the bottom one. Get ready. are in my car, and when I'm through with them, they'll be on my way to Paris to stand trial for murder. Good work, Colonel. I think I'll think now. Oh, don't, darling. Wait until we're married. <laughs> Sonny, I gave you the license, didn't I? Yes, sir. I, I have it here, sir. 